The other day I gave my thoughts on the first episode of Agatha All Along, a new TV series on Disney Plus in the MCU, a sequel to WandaVision, and a show that I'm going to continue watching and giving my thoughts on. And so here we are with the second episode. Did this one win me over more than the first? Let's find out in a spoiler video right now. <laughs> How exciting! Agatha Harkness, or more appropriately, Agatha, I believe is how you say it. Agatha? I think it's Agatha. I can't really say things right because I'm originally from Minnesota and we talk a little bit different over there, don't you know? This episode fires up with Harkness awakening from her slumber. She's been in a trance for three years, just coming to the realization that her life has been wasted away in this stupid little town. And she is powerless! She's got no magic in that old silk hat, and she wants it back. This episode is going to be Aubrey Plaza free, which means it already loses a letter grade in my book. She's the best thing about pretty much anything she's in. So we're going to set that disappointment aside and see what this one has to offer. Well, that 70s show Mom is back. I think she's great. She's always funny. She's just that lovable old lady you want to give a hug to. Not too hard, though. You might you might crush the old bones. <laughs> ah, I love you. Oh, oh. And then she just lifelessly lays there in your arms. Ah, you just dying in my arms tonight. It must have been something I did. I shouldn't have hugged so hard. This episode also has music. I was told in a comment on my last video that this show, because I asked the question, who is this made for? What is the demo for this thing? And they said in a very profound way that this show is made for cat ladies and the gays. And sure, I can kind of see that. I did forget to mention that in the first episode, Katherine Hahn and Aubrey Plaza's character have more sexual tension than the two dudes from Brokeback Mountain and the other two dudes from Deadpool and Wolverine. And speaking of gay, this one has an effeminate teenage boy who's locked in a closet, very on brand for Disney. He is released from his cell, pulled the tape off of his mouth so that he can spill the beans on who he is and what he plans to do. Unfortunately, he's censored by magic. He's unable to speak. He gets a little bit of a <laughs> scribble over his mouth. Later, he tries to say where he's from and Agatha can't hear shit. He's being censored somehow. This kid's a puzzler. He's a mystery. Let me take off my professor glasses for a second, set them right over here on the fictitious table in front of me, and ask you to subscribe to the channel. As you can see, this is very highbrow commentary. I would love if you came along with me. In fact, I would be pleased as punch if you subscribe to the channel so you could hear me talk about further episodes of Agatha All Along, along with the myriad of movie reviews I do every single week on the channel. It's quite a breathtaking experience. Okay, let's get back to the... Nope. Oh, <laughs> let's get back to the commentary. I think I opened with this, but it's hard to know. I black out so often. This episode was far better than the first. The first episode I thought was a boring, hot mess that really did nothing to showcase what this show was going to be about. It was just a slog to get through. At only a, like 20 some minutes long, it was hard to even finish. And it was so pointless. All it did is reset the character back to where she's no longer brainwashed. They could have done this in a much more fascinating way. But moving past that disgusting, padded, gross garbage episode, we have one that's far more fun, far more poppy, far more peppy. Le Pew. And has an actual goal. There is a premise here this time. Agatha wants her power back. This young boy tells her the best way to get it is to take the witch's road. Sounds like some Wizard of Oz shit. <laughs> you better believe it is, Buster. But in order to gain access to the road, they need a coven. A group of witches. And preferably a diverse one. And that's exactly what we get. You better believe that casting department over at Disney HQ is walking around with a clipboard, making sure every single box is checked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This looks good. Do we have Asian representation? Good. Do we have a strong female black lead? Of course. Give her a bull ring. Give her a goddamn bull ring! We have an elderly white woman. Perfect. Do we have a strong white male? 
<laughs> it's a joke. It's a, of course not. It's a joke. This is Disney 2024, baby. No, those are done. I like Aubrey Plaza. Catherine Hahn is always a treat. Although, I get not always. Actually, I take that back. She was pretty terrible in the first episode as the detective. I did not like that version of her character. Here, she's far more in her element. She's having fun a little bit. She's snippy. She's, she's pissed that she has no abilities yet. But at the same time, she's still a force to be reckoned with. The rest of the episode is going to be a road trip adventure where she and this teenage kid that she calls her pet are going to go to different places, all conveniently kind of located close by. That, it's, that's witch magic for you. And she's going to start recruiting some of these ladies for the coven. These exchanges range from, oh, that was kind of cool. Like the first one where she talks to the elderly woman who has the crystal ball and who's clearly a grifter, but then not a grifter. It, 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 that was good. I like that. Uh, but then she goes to this lady that's selling candles. That was boring. She goes to the mall to find the rocker witch. That was even worse. And then she goes back to the house where they're going to perform this beautiful song that's going to open a door that leads to the witch's road. And that song, pretty solid. Found it to be kind of a banger, if I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, witch's road, take me home to the place I belong. Witch's Road. That's not even remotely how it goes. It starts with witches. I don't know why. It doesn't even matter which road you try. Keep that in mind. I designed this rhyme to remind myself why. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Every road you go, there's a witch for you to hold on to. Down, down the witch's road, down the witch's road, down the fucking road, down that road, down down that fucking road, down that witch's road. I came into this road as a Wiccan. Look into these eyes, then you'll see the size of my witch. And you say. You only witch what you want to. While the acapella's going on, or I guess more appropriately, the witch appella. Upstairs, teenage boy is being attacked by mysterious Death Eaters outside. They're slowly creeping into the house. Down, down, down with the sickness, motherfucker. You're going down with the sickness. You're going down with the witches. <laughs> I think I lost my mind. Fucking oh, God. What is happening anymore? You mother get up, you're going down with the witches, you're about to get up. Before these evil other witches get close to them, they get down inside of this hidden trap door that appears in the floor, and they're now on their journey of self-discovery. Because once they reach the end of this road, to their destination, short, of course, for destination, they are able to get a wish granted. And of course, Agatha always wanted power, and so that's what she's going to ask for. But there's other, you know, th there's a coven here. So I'm not entirely sure how all this is going to work out. If they each get a wish. If they can wish the other one dead. If they can wish to take all the powers from the others. There's probably going to be some legalese they need to work out. There's going to be some fine lines that they're going to have to read. Across the T's, dot the I's, uh, carry over the MCU's. See what really shakes out at the end. But we have assembled in a team. A team that's either going to end up casting a bunch of cool-ass spells and fighting to the death in some glorious battle, or hosting themselves one hell of a baby shower. We'll find out as this season continues. That was episode two of Agatha All Along. Make sure to take off your shoes before you hit that witch's road. That's one of the things they don't tell you when you first arrive. But Agatha's been here before, so she's like, ep, 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 shoes off, ladies. You don't want guests traipsing through your living room with those muddy things on their feet. Remove them or lose them, sister! So to summarize, this episode was better than the first. It's still a far cry from anything I would call great. It's watchable. Um, it's more fun this time. It's, it's clearly, you know, it's cr clearly not something to be taken very seriously. I, uh, the, the tone was so odd in the first one. There's still some long pauses here where it feels like they're almost padding out the scenes by adding extra seconds in between conversation. Uh, like, there's a scene early on where Agatha's talking to the young man and, uh, there is a long pause when she asks him something and he retorts and then she's like, let me think about this. 
Hmm. Hmm. How much more time, director, do we have to fill? Five more seconds? Okay, good. Okay, what was the question? Well, there you have it. Agatha all along, episode two. We have a third one coming out Wednesday. So really back to back to back here on this channel. Absolutely subscribe if you like the commentary, if you like the nonsensical approach to talking about anything really, because I love doing this and I love making people laugh and engage them. And, and maybe, you know, we, we have a fun time together. Who, who knows? You know, who knows where this witch's road's gonna take us when it's all said and done. If you love what I'm doing, I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants. I periodically post there, trying to do once a week, but uh, I was off for a week, so now I'm playing catch up and this channel's the priority, of course, but a lot of funny stuff over there on Adam Does Rants. It's, it's me doing more of this, but on first world problems. Some people, strangers on the streets have been coming up to me with tears in their eyes saying, sir, I, I cannot believe how much you changed my life with this second channel. I was having a really bad day. You made me laugh, sir, and I appreciate it. And I said, yes, uh, here's a tissue. Clean yourself up and don't talk to me ever again. You're disgusting. Please leave. Uh, I also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. This is a one-man band. After all, I would appreciate the support over there. Even at $1, you get access to over 300 exclusive videos, right? Lifted from the Disney vault, the, the Adam Disney vault, of course. I would appreciate any support you can give, and hopefully... I catch you next time. A down the witch's road. Down, 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 down that witch's road.